you know what? I've been working so long on this bass guitar project that I'm not sure what it is. I mean, is this a scratch build? I don't know. There's something familiar about it. Let's get going. Hello there, I'm Dave Dickens and welcome to my workshop. Now, back to this bass guitar build and in the last episode, I did a lot of work on the neck. I got the binding stuck on. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is smooth this binding back down to the fretboard and then get back to work on cutting the cavity for this neck pocket. So let's get going. Let's see if I can use my little plane here to uh, to start this off. Uh, see if I can work out which way the grain's going. Looks promising. Now Matt Eastley has just done a wonderful video on sharpening a chisel or sharpening chisels and um, I would recommend you go and see that. Now this is a set of water stones that I got from Axminster Tools oh, years and years ago and um, well these are a wonderful set of sharpening instruments here so I've got a coarse grain slightly finer grain a finer grain still and I know this is 7,000 grit but to be perfectly honest with you I can't remember what all of these are but certainly I use this to grind the edge so if uh, I've got a new chisel I'll grind it on there and then I use these to, uh, to hone the very end now then let's get on with this blade and to be honest with you it looks a bit worse for wear. I must say I haven't sharpened it for some time now but that edge is looking decidedly dodgy so I think I'm going to grind that back a bit first. Now it all gets a bit wet so I'll just move those out to one side and I've got this board an old chopping board that I've got a couple of uh, stays screwed into it just some plastic blocks that stops the whole lot moving backwards and forwards and um, just need a clamp to clamp that down right. that should be okay in fact I think I'll have two clamps now these are water stones so ideally you should soak them in water but I'm going to cheat a little bit today. I'm just going to spray some water on the top of this to keep it wet. I've got this just very simple Stanley honing guide uh, and I've set it to 25 degrees. So I'm going to let's, uh, let's, uh, let's grind it to 25 and then um, take it from there. So here we go. Could take a while so I'll be back when I'm a bit further on. I do find sharpening chisels, plain blades and the rest 
is um, one of those jobs that's very therapeutic. Put on a bit of music and while away the afternoon, rubbing a bit of metal backwards and forwards. Well, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm, I'm getting towards the edge there. And um, that's definitely not a straight edge. So, uh, yeah, let's keep going. Almost there. And uh, there's a burr on the back forming. Okay, so I think that's as far as I need to go with that. So now I'm gonna to go to a finer grade. And I do wish I could remember what this was. I think it, I'm gonna attempt you to say it was a, um, a 250 grit, but I don't think it is. I think it's finer than that. Now I'm going backwards and forwards on this. What I tend to do is put pressure on the blade as I pull it back and then release it as I push it forwards. That's looking pretty good. I'll go to a finer grade. And this is a finer stone, so I use this Nagura block, I believe that's what it's called. And I just rub it on the top to create a bit of a slurry. I, I got this from David Charlesworth. Now, I, he's a fantastic carpenter and uh, he produced a video, an hour long video, which um, <clears throat> fortunately I <laughs> sat through with my daughter. She wasn't that impressed with that. But uh, fantastic video on how to sharpen a plain blade. Recommended viewing. Probably not for young daughters, mind you. <laughs> yeah, that's looking pretty good. I can see the very edge there it isn't polished, so I'm going to keep keep going with this block for a bit longer. Now then, don't forget, I still want to uh, see your guitars, guitars that you've built yourself. Uh, and I'd like the sort of stories behind them, all the, uh, the things that went well and the things that didn't go so well. This is, uh, this is the time to uh, confess uh, all the mistakes that you made when making your guitar so that uh, we can all learn from them. Um, it should be good fun. Okay, I've got that looking pretty good. I'm going to change the angle now to 33 degrees to do the uh, just the, the very tip of the blade. But before I do that, I'm just going to take the burr off. I'm going to rub this onto there. Matt Easley said, do the figure of eight, because that's the most effective way of using the, the stone. Well, there you are. Figure of eight, here we go. This has actually got a hot spot in the middle there, which is not ideal. I mean, this is a really old blade. Um, but uh, I'm not sure that there's much I can do about that. Well, I got rid of the burr anyway, so that's okay. So now let's change the angle. I honestly can't remember how much this set of stones cost when I bought it, but as I said, I've had it years now. Um, and I think they are good value for money because, you know, although my sharpening isn't perfect, I do get a nice edge and, uh, well, it does the job. So this is a 7,000 grit 
and I'm just going to rub this a few times really to polish that end. Try to avoid digging the blade into the stone. I think we might have a sharp edge there, let's see. Let's pull that out that way. Just, oops. Take off any burrs. So now I've honed that down to quite a nice sharp edge. So that should be uh, okay. Let's just put this back in this plane. This is a, um, a plane my late father-in-law had. Um, it was very rusty and um, I uh, cleaned up the rust and I painted it. And uh, it looks nice, I think. Now then, I can do some fine adjustment in a minute. Let's see if this works. Here we go. Oh wow, look at that. Oh, that's cutting. Ah, oh, it's just like butter, look at that. Oh, beautifully, beautifully done. So, my sharpening technique might not be the absolute right way to do it, but it gets it sharp. Learn that walnut does have a tendency to uh, to rip out if you're not careful. Um, some dodgy areas on this. Um, I'm just being very careful. I think this blade is very sharp though, and it's just it's, uh, it's managing to get through it okay. I think I've probably reach the point where it's going to be safer just to sand the rest down. Now I will show you this because I always show you warts and all and uh, this is the, one of the dangers of using a plane when you're taking the edging off and that is that you catch the fretboard and I've done that and it's, it's sort of showed up now when I've been sanding around so I've got a little nick there I've got a couple of nicks there I don't think they're too deep, so I'm going to sand it down a bit more, see if I can get rid of those, but something to be aware of, I missed that. Now that took me a bit longer than I thought and it just shows you've got to be very careful if you're going to use a little plane like this to take off the binding um, you've got to be careful you don't touch the fretboard. Um, I've got rid of the, the two marks that were there. There's just a slight mark there which I think I'm going to have to live with to be honest with you. I also noticed that there was a slight back bow on this and um, I've tried to sand out the middle there to try and level that because um, I like to start off with a level neck if possible. So I think that's done. The next thing to do will be to route this pocket in the body. But before I do that there's a job which I really need to do and uh, something I don't enjoy that much but I need to make sure that these stones, water stones, are flat and I do that using an old bathroom tile and some sandpaper. Now I'll use 120 grit here. I'm sure this isn't the proper way to do this. You should do this with float glass and a finer paper. But it's, this is the way I've done it in the past. And uh, well, it works for me. So I'm gonna give it a go again. I draw some pencil lines on the block. Spray some water on the tile just to hold the 
paper down flat and then just rub it a few times and you can see where there's a dip and then it's just a question of uh, working that down and I think that's probably going to be okay now I've just rinsed the paper off under a tap and I'll do the next one working from the fine grades up. Yeah, that's okay. This isn't wet and dry paper so it's not going to last very long but I found it does last long enough just to uh, flatten those blocks. Well look that's the way I sharpen. If you want to see the experts do it, uh, Matt Eastley, Ben Crow, David Charlesworth, they're the ones to watch. Okay, let's just clear up a bit. Right now, a few days have passed since I sharpened the blade on this plane, and since I've done that, um, Matt Eastley, uh, the carpenter that I, I on YouTube I like watching, has put up another great video on how to sharpen a plane blade. And you may remember that I showed you the back of the blade and it looked like this. This has actually got a hot spot in the middle there, which is not ideal. I mean, this is a really old blade. Well, that's not right. I needed to get the edge smooth right to the end and I didn't. So this plane is not as sharp as it could be. So I'm gonna have another go at that another time. Anyway, in the meantime, you may remember that in the last video, um, I was going to make a template to route the neck pocket and then realize that uh, the template that I had, this piece of wood, this piece of plywood was the wrong size. So um, I then got diverted off and did the neck. So now I'm back and I want to create this template. So let me show you. I wanted to use this uh, template that I've got to create the neck pocket uh, routing template. And I realized that it was the wrong size. So what I've done, I've made it now the same size or the same width as the neck. So I can use it now as the, uh, the basis for this template. And the way I'm going to make this routing template is to use these pieces of wood I have here and line those up with the edge and against that central template. Now I'm just going to screw this piece of wood here. Now I'm going to use this to route out a piece of plywood to the right size. So first things first, let me screw this down. Hopefully all will become clear once I've got this screwed down. I can show you how I intend to uh, make this routing template. Now I want to route the neck pocket back so that it goes just in the middle of the the, the 21st between the 21st and 22nd fret there. Um, so I've marked that on the uh, on the template. I marked that across on this these two pieces of wood here and this will be as far as I need to uh, go with the routing template okay that's that now I don't need this anymore so I'm going to move this out of the way right, I need to create a stop for the router so I'm just going to cut this off cut to the right size
Okay, so I'm going to use this piece of 12 mil ply to make the actual template, and I've I've marked uh, um, where the actual recess is going to be, and I've also marked a center line. So I'm just going to line this back up with that. Okay, that looks all right. Now I'm going to screw that down. Okay, that's nice and firm. Now I can route that template. Of course it pays just to check the neck will fit. And um, it's gonna be tight, which is what I want it to be. Uh, but that looks, that looks okay. I've got a little bit of leeway to it. I can take off the neck there. So that's good. Okay, let's crack on. quite get to the bottom there so I'm just gonna trim that out with a knife or oh, actually go I think yeah. so I'll just tidy that up with a bit of sandpaper now then I've just checked the center line by putting this uh, master template on the guitar Lining the whole lot up and just double checking it. My centre line that I'd drawn on here was slightly off, so I've corrected that. Now I'm going to fix this down with some masking tape and super glue. Now, in theory, I could have screwed it into where the pickup cavities are going to go, but I'm not absolutely decided that yet. So um, I think it's probably safer just to super glue it and uh, masking tape it. Well, that super glue is just drying a minute I need to now work out how deep I've got a route now according to my notes uh, I need to leave eight mil above the the top of the guitar and um, that includes the fretboard uh, we'll go for the middle of the fretboard there so at the moment that's 25 so 8 from 25 is going to take me down to 17. So I think I need to route to a depth of 17. Well that took a bit of time and I probably could have saved myself a bit of uh, effort there if, if I'd have used a force and a bit to take out some of the material, but I didn't. Uh, that's 17 deep, which is what I want it to be. So, let's template off. That's okay, need a bit of shaping around there. Okay, so now I'm going to use this dovetail bit to create a slope just inside there and uh, there'll be a corresponding angle on the end of the neck that slots into that. I'm going to do this by hand. Of course when I say by hand I mean free hand. So let's set this up. not sure how well you can see that but it's got that slope back on there so uh, that's all ready for me to uh, actually carve the corresponding slope on the end of the neck okay it's getting a bit late in the day today so I'm gonna 
pack up and I think I'm probably going to call this video a day as well because um, it's been a little while since I put a video out. I've been doing quite a bit of DIY stuff in between. Uh, the next job I need to do is to sort out the end of the neck so that it fits into this dovetail. Um, that's gone all right, that looks pretty good. So I, I noticed that I th I've got some gaps where I put that little fillet in there and I think I need to put some uh, dust and glue down there to strengthen it a bit. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to need to do that. So there's a few little bits and pieces I need to do. But uh, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, I've got the challenge out, the R scoring challenge. So if you're a guitar player or a keyboard player, please go and have a look at that video and uh, have a go at that. I know there is another competition going on at the moment, Score Relief, and that finishes at the end of January. So um, there's, there's no rush with, uh, with uh, my challenge. It was just uh, something to uh, keep us occupied at the start of the year. So it'll keep running. I'm going to finish it up in uh, March sometime. But uh, till then, please have a go. Please uh, put some compositions up on uh, YouTube or Instagram. Anyway, thank you very much again for watching. Please don't forget to hit subscribe. I'll see you soon. Cheers.